thoughts to share with you as we begin this most holiest of weeks. Certainly as we gather, we gather as people of good faith, and, and I know you are. And I know that uh, you know many of the scriptures that we proclaim, not only today, but through the coming week. We know, we know the story very well. And uh, sometimes when we know a story very well, we can kind of, you know, zone out, you know. And uh, hopefully, maybe this week we can uh, pay a little closer attention. Pay a little closer attention to some of the individuals that we meet in these passages and pay a little closer attention to Jesus and what he experienced and maybe try to identify our own personal life with some of what we experience. You know, for example, Pilate. You know, Pilate pretty much did not want to put Jesus to death. And we know in another translation of the story we just heard, you know, Mrs. Pilate, you know, came to him and said, uh, do not have anything to do with this man's death. I suffered in a dream terribly because of him. Now, I don't know what kind of husband Pilate was because any good husband would listen to his wife. And uh, he did not. <laughs> and uh, what happened with Pilate? He was afraid. He knew what the right thing to do was, but he, out of fear, caved into pressure from the outside. Well, maybe in our lives at times we know what the right thing to do is, but we have a, a similar fear and we cave under pressure. Maybe something to reflect on. And you have Simon Peter. You know, Simon Peter, he has more ups and downs than the stock market in all of the scripture. You know, Simon is uh, out fishing and came in, caught nothing, and Jesus uses the boat to preach, and, and uh, Jesus says, you know, throw the net over the side. And, you know, I think Simon Peter sarcastically was thinking, you know, I'm, I know what I'm doing, I'm a fisherman, but if you say so, I'll do it. Of course, he caught all these fish. They had to signal for the other man in the boat, and Peter's eyes were opened, and he said, Lord, get away from me, I'm a sinful man. And of course, Jesus lifts him up and says, you know, you need to go out into the deep. I'll make you fishers of men. And uh, right in the middle of Jesus' ministry, he's got the apostles together and says, uh, who do the people say that I am? And some of the apostles say, well, some think you're John the Baptist, some think Elijah, some think one of the prophets of old. Then Jesus turns the question and directs it directly to the apostles, but who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter immediately confesses his faith. You're the Savior, the Messiah, the one we're waiting for. Back up. Very next verses, Jesus starts to predict his suffering and death. And Peter's reply, God forbid anything like that should happen to you. Peter goes right down. What does Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. You're thinking not as God, but as man. Of course, then today we, we hear that he can't even stay awake in the garden, kind of on the bottom, but he stayed in the garden, saw the arrest, was waiting outside. And then what do we hear right back down where he denies our Lord? And one week from today, we'll remember who is it that led the charge at the time of the resurrection, but Peter. Maybe our lives of faith are kind of like Peter's, a lot of ups and downs, probably true. For most of us, we have a lot of peaks and a lot of valleys in our ability to follow the Lord. Maybe this week we identify with Peter, try to pray about him and look at him in the scripture and identify with him. And uh, each of the translations has uh, little details, you know, and maybe sometimes some of the details, you kind of scratch your head and say, I wonder what that thing meant, you know? And today, Mark's gospel has one of those little details. It's the only gospel account of the passion narrative that includes this unnamed young man running away, leaving his clothing behind. It's kind of one of those little details. You kind of scratch your head and say, well, what does that mean? 
course, most scripture scholars will say that is St. Mark himself and that he wrote himself into being present in the garden, which is certainly very logical because most commonly agree that the Garden of Gethsemane, the Garden of Olives, was, was owned by St. Mark and it was his family's property. So even though not named to be one of those who went off to pray with the Lord, very reasonable that he was probably on that property. And if you really study a little bit of what that passage meant, St. Thomas More reflected upon it and, and said in this young man, we should always be prepared for the troubles of our life that will arise suddenly, dangers that will strike us without really any warning. We need to be prepared and necessary, if need be, to run away. We should not be overloaded with things that will keep us behind. And in that emergency, to throw away anything that we need in order to be faithful to Christ. Maybe this coming week, if some of these little details that you've often heard and said, yeah, I wonder what that means, you know, maybe an opportunity in your prayer to, to do a little reading, a little study, a little research from scripture scholars and the saints of the church to try to understand in a, in a deeper way the meaning of our faith. As we begin this uh, beautiful Holy Week, perhaps really listen in a way different than, than other years and to try to identify with some of those that we encounter and try to understand maybe some of the details that we have never fully comprehended.